हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर अंजुम रशीद टुडे आई विल टॉक अबाउट डायपर एरिया एरप्शन और डायपर डर्मेटाइटिस आई विल डिस्कस द डिफरेंशियल डायग्नोसिस एंड मैनेजमेंट डायपर डर्मेटाइटिस इज द टर्म यूज टू डिस्क्राइब इन्फ्लेमेटरी स्किन कंडीशन दैट कैन अकर इन द डायपर एरिया नाउ द वर्ड डायपर इज इंक्लूडेड इन द नेम नॉट बिकॉज द डायपर प्राइमरीली कॉज द डर्मेटाइटिस बट रेदर बिकॉज द डर्मेटाइटिस इज एसोसिएटेड विद कम्बिनेशन ऑफ फैक्टर्स within the tapering area including prolonged overhydration friction and the presence of irritant in urine and feces knowledge of the complex etiology of diaper dermatitis is key to effective prevention and management first differential is the most common and important irritant contact dermatitis it is caused by skin rubbing against a wet soil diaper or another part of the skin usual age is between 3 weeks to 2 years Peak age is 9 to 12 months. Rash consists of erythema with fine scaling and glazed skin surface. Margins are not always evident. There is erosion and shallow ulceration in severe cases. The sides are the convex surfaces that is the upper inner thigh, lower abdomen, buttocks, scrotum and perianal area. It spare the skin folds. Now the risk factors are the diaper, cloth or diarrhea. and it is basically a clinical diagnosis second differential of the diaper area eruption is jacquard erosive diaper dermatitis it is a severe form of irritant contact dermatitis in infants and children these are well demarcated punch out ulcers and erosion with crater like borders primarily it involve the convex surfaces that is the upper medial thigh lower abdomen buttocks and it spare the skin folds It is usually associated with infrequent diaper changes and poor removal of the chemical which are used in home laundering. It may also occur in infants with incontinence or chronic diarrhea such as in short bowel syndrome or following surgery for Hirschsprung disease. Another diaper area eruption is erosive perianal dermatitis. It is usually seen in infants 6 weeks to 3 month of age but it can be seen at other ages. It is due to frequent stooling either in breastfed babies or children with diarrhea due to malabsorption or infection in infants with short cut syndrome. The lesion consists of well demarcated erosions and superficial ulceration of about 0.5 to 1.5 cm. And these lesions are typically seen in perianal area and the opposing areas of buttock. It is basically a clinical diagnosis. Fourth diaper area eruption is granuloma gluteal infantum. It is a severe chronic variant of irritant contact dermatitis due to prolonged and chronic urine and fecal leakage. There is history of chronic diaper dermatitis which is treated with multiple products including corticosteroids. Usual age is about 2 to 8 months and the rash consists of painless oval reddish brown to purple papules or nodules. These are about 0.5 to 4 cm in diameter. They can have large raised erosions with rolled margins. Now this rash is limited to prominent areas of groin, thighs, abdomen and genitalia. Axilla and neck they can be involved. The diagnosis is basically clinical and the biopsy shows dense non-specific inflammatory infiltrate which consists of neutrophils, lymphocyte, plasma cell and histocyte. proliferation of dermal capillaries extra visited rbcs and hemosiderin fifth is the pseudo verrucous papule and nodules it is the most severe form of jacquard erosive diaper dermatitis or erosive perianal dermatitis or granuloma gluteal infantum it is an inflammatory reaction following unremitting irritation due to urine or feces So triggers include severe intractable diarrhea such as malabsorption short bowel syndrome or following repair of imperforate anus or Hirschsprung disease it can also occur in chronic urinary incontinence usually infants are affected but it can occur at any age now the rash consists of multiple shiny smooth red or white moist flat shape 2 to 10 mm papules or nodules and these occur in the diaper or perianal area and also around the stomas it is most commonly confused with the genital warts 
The diagnosis is basically clinical and the biopsy show reactive acanthosis and swarasi form spongiotic dermatitis. Allergic contact dermatitis is also an important diaper area eruption. This is due to allergic reaction from fragrances, preservatives and emulsifiers. So usually it develops when a new product is introduced. It usually affects infant more than 6 months of age. There is erythema followed by an area of eczematous eruption of red papules and vesicles associated with edema. There is typical associated pruritus. It can involve any skin to which the culprit agent is applied including the sites outside the diaper area such as trunk limbs or face. It is diagnosed clinically and the biopsy shows spongiotic dermatitis with eosinophils. Seventh type of diaper dermatitis is intertrigo. It occurs when wet skin which is more fragile and has a higher coefficient of friction become damaged from maceration and chafing. Now the rash consists of slight to severe erythema and there is no pustule or erosion. It is usually asymptomatic. It occurs in skin creases where skin surfaces are in opposition, such as in goinal or intergluteal areas or folds of thigh. It usually follows a bout of diarrhea exacerbated by scrubbing or use of commercial soap. It is diagnosed clinically. Number 8 is the Candida diaper dermatitis. It usually affects infant more than 2 months of age and consists of distinctive clusters of erythematous papules and pustules which later coalesce into beefy red confluent rash with sharp borders. Now satellite lesions can be found beyond these borders. It begins in the inguinal fold but may involve in the entire perineum. Typically skin folds are involved in this. Now the lesions are painful and the baby cries during diaper changes or with urine and defecation. There is often history of preceding antibiotic use or diarrhea. It may have associated oral thrush. Now diagnosis is usually clinical. Potassium hydroxide scrapping of the lesion shows pseudohyphae and the culture are positive for candida. Number 9 is the infantile seborrheic dermatitis. It is a chronic inflammatory disease which parallels the distribution, size and activity of sebaceous gland. The usual causative agent is Malassezia furfur. Now this begins in the first month of life and typically self-resolve by one year. The rash consists of a non-pruritic, erythematous, well-demarcated patches or plague. The scales are often minimal in diaper region and there are no satellite lesions. Now the skin creases show more severe involvement but it may involve entire diaper area. Oily scaly crusted lesions can be present on scalp, face, retroauricular areas, axilla and pre-sternal region. Now diagnosis is clinical and the potassium hydroxide test should be done to rule out associated candidiasis. Now I will discuss the prevention and general management of diaper dermatitis. First important point is to educate the parents. Most of the diaper dermatitis respond to changes in diapering practices. Advice to keep the skin in the diaper area as dry as possible. Advice for more frequent diaper changes to limit the amount of time the skin is exposed to urine and feces. Advice for changing diaper every 2 hours sooner if it is wet or soiled. And switch to disposable brand of diaper which contains super absorbent gelling material that wicks away the moisture. Conventional disposable diapers or reusable cloth, cloth diapers they should be widened. Tight fitting diapers they should also be widened. And advice not to use waterproof pants during treatment. Now second important measure is the application of barrier cream. It is used for prevention and also as a first line treatment of diaper dermatitis. The best is to use zinc oxide paste and petroleum jelly. But other barrier creams which contain cod liver oil, dimethicone, lanolin, dexpenthenol and burrow solution they are also good for this uh, diaper dermatitis. Now it is better to avoid boric acid, camphor, phenol, benzocaine and salicylate containing products. Cornstarch, talc powder and white soft paraffin should also be avoided. Now also avoid fragrances and preservative containing topical creams. Now third important measure is the gentle cleaning of the diaper area. Excessive scrubbing should be avoided. The urine can be rinsed away with warm damp water and feces can be removed with warm water and mild non-perfumed soap. 
Now, in severe cases of diaper dermatitis, non-fluorinated low-potency corticosteroid such as 1% hydrocortisone cream or ointment can be used. These are usually applied 3 to 4 times daily with each diaper change and are given for 1 to 2 weeks. High-potency corticosteroid, they should be avoided in children. In case of candida infection, topical ointment or cream containing nystatin, chlorimazole, miconazole, ketoconazole or cyclopyrox are helpful. Now, in the case of bacterial infection, topical antibiotics such as bacitracin or mobirocin, they can be used. And in severe cases, oral antibiotics such as amoxicillin, clavulinate, they can be given. Impidago respond to dicloxacillin or erythromycin. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel.